Jay here, and in today's video, D sets up the sump wall board with the two newest pieces, the sump crane and the sump wall settlement. These two newest pieces split the board in two, allowing two games to be played simultaneously. Mike and myself played a game on one half of the board, while D and Ben played on the other half. This video is the story of my game versus Mike. This time on JD in the Sump Sea. Today's game was a skirmish, and was not even a little bit balanced. I took an outcast gang led by a psyker who was kicked out of House Orlock, and was built from scratch to make a thousand credit gang for this game. Mike took an Ogren gang that had, had many upgrades, which he had used in our previous campaign. We played a mission randomly generated using the open Hive War deck. The cards we drew were Ammo Shortage, Kill Box, Free For All, and Kidnap Job. Ammo Shortage makes all weapons gain the Scarce trait and lose the Plentiful trait if they had it. In addition, heavy and special weapons must reroll successful ammo checks. Killbox explains how to win and what rewards the gangs would receive. We were playing a skirmish, so only the winning the battle section mattered to us. Basically, the battle ends if there's only one gang with fighters left. It's your basic win condition. Free for all showed the deployment zones. This was really fun and I'm glad we had such a goofy deployment setup. This sort of thing adds a lot to how the game feels and can allow you to try out new strategies and or tactics. Kidnap Job was by far the most interesting card we drew. The main objective for this scenario was to kidnap a hive dweller who was then placed in the center of the battlefield. This objective acted like a loot crate, but had to be taken to a battlefield edge to count as controlling the objective at the end of the game. So Dee placed Cannabella Fritz, a character from Sump City Radio, into her piece of scatter scratch terrain that he built, which was Bistro Bella. This was situated in the middle of the board, and she became our Hive Dweller objective. Mike wins the priority roll and goes first. He moves his Ogryn that is on top of the Sump Crane build closer to the platform edge. My champion, Zex Marquis, then shoots his long Laz at Mike's Ogryn that is on the platform in the middle of the back sump wall. I hit but don't wound. It still forces the Ogryn to go prone. He then also needs to pass an initiative test or fall. That's uh, 14 inches. He fails the initiative test. He falls 14 inches which turns out to be Strength 9, AP minus 3, 3 damage hit. He fails his save, goes to zero wounds, then Mike rolls an out of action result on the damage die. Mike then moves another ogre in twice to get him right in front of my leader, Bruno Tough now, whom we don't talk about. I then charge Bruno into the ogre, keeping one inch away with my chain glaive, so he can't attack Bruno back, and I hit a couple times but don't wound the ogre. Next, Mike moves a different Ogren twice, getting him underneath some stairs. And this is my chance. I activate Aaron Mathewin, my other champion, and charge the Ogren. He has a Servo Claw, a Plasma Pistol, and Berserk Charge. I'm pretty confident with this move. I hit him twice and wound him twice with the Servo Claw, but he saves both wounds. I then put the Plasma Pistol on full strength mode and wound him. He fails his save. I roll a serious injury on the damage dice. My champion then coup de gras him as a free action. Mike then moves his ogre and leader twice and gets him up to the first platform on the staircase above my champion, Aaron. A hive scummer of mine, Corgan Mannix, uses his hand flamer on the ogre. It wounds him, but he saves and then isn't set on fire and being a lobo isn't pinned either. Mike then moves another ogre twice and gets him near the one I tried to set on fire. I then aim and shoot my hive scum to wall in Nick's fleet's las gun at the Ogren on top of the sump crane platform. She hits and wounds, but he saves and is just pinned. Mike then activates another Ogren on the lower section of the sump crane platform and moves him twice, getting him onto a small boat. I then activate my hive scummer Ood Nefroy, shuffle him along the wall, then drop a frag grenade on Mike's Ogren leader's head. Since the distance down is more than my scummer can throw, we rule that it automatically scatters. The frag grenade scatters back into the wall and stops, hitting Mike's Ogren boss. 
It doesn't wound him, but he is pinned and goes prone. Mike then moves an Ogren over to the edge of a platform and tosses an incendiary charge onto my hive scummer Dwala Nick's fleet. The grenade misses and scatters into the sup. Running Rat, another hive scummer of mine, moves down the stairs and shoots a solid shot shotgun shell at the Ogren who just threw the grenade. It hits and wounds him, but the Ogren makes his save. He fails his initiative check, however, and falls into the sump. He's gonna use a crush on him. Mike then uses a psychic power crush on Running Rat, but fails the casting roll. I then activate Nero Horn, another hive scum who only has a las gun, and he moves and fires at the Lobo standing in front of my leader. He hits, but fails to wound. Mike then activates and moves an Ogren from the base of the sump wall onto a small boat trying to get closer to the objective, Cannabella Fritz. Turn 2 begins and I immediately use a tactics card, Take the Initiative. This card allows me to automatically win priority. I then charge my leader Bruno into his Lobo Ogren again, and this time I actually wound him. He fails his save, and I seriously wound him. Mike then uses a tactics card, Grenade Bouquet, allowing him to toss three grenades instead of just one, although he then automatically runs out of ammo. He hits Duwala twice with the incendiary charges. Running Rat is also hit, is pinned, and takes a flesh wound. But Duwala takes the brunt of it and takes a flesh wound and a serious injury. She is then also set on fire and falls into the sump. When she lands, she gets wounded again and takes another flesh wound. So she's on fire, in the sump, seriously wounded with two flesh wounds. I don't think she's surviving this game. <laughs> Running Rat then fails his initiative check, falls into the sump, takes a wound, goes out of action from the fall. Corgan Mannix then activates and charges the seriously injured Ogren and coup de grace him. Mike's boss Ogren stands up and throws a grenade at Nero Horn. It wounds him and he goes out of action. My champion, Aaron Mathewin, who just killed an Ogren the turn before in close combat, charges Mike's Ogren boss. At this time, the results are much different. I hit only once and wound only once. The Ogren saves and attacks back. Three hits, three wounds, no armor saves, eight damage dice, and Aaron is out of action. Mike then activates and moves an Ogren across a sump barge and onto a floating platform that Bruno, whom we don't talk about, is also standing on. I then activate Zex Marquis. He aims and fires his long las at the Ogren near the big pipe. Unfortunately, he misses. Mike then charges my scummer, Corgan Mannix, with an Ogren. Mannix survives with just a flesh wound taken, but can't hurt the Ogren. Ood then climbs down a ladder. Mike then activates the Ogren who fell into the sump, makes a strength check to see if he drowns. He passes the check and then swims over to a boat and climbs on board. She might as well just drown and get it over with, right? Mike then moves another Ogren from the base of the sump wall onto a barge to get closer to the objective. In the end step, I then bottle, but everyone who's still alive sticks around. That's the end of turn two. Turn 3 begins with Mike winning priority. He moves his boss Ogren up the stairs and throws a grenade at Zex Marquis, who is hit and fails a save, then goes out of action. I activate my leader Bruno, who then charges the Ogren who just jumped onto the platform. He hits only once and fails to wound. Mike then activates and moves his psychic Ogren closer to Bruno, and he casts Crush. Bruno attempts to stop it, but fails. He then takes a flesh wound, fails his initiative check, and falls into the sump. Mike then activates another Ogren and moves closer to the center of the board. I don't have many gangers left, but we keep on playing anyways. I activate Corgan Mannix, and he tries his best to attack and hurt the Ogren, but his attack fails to wound. The Ogren attacks back, hits and wounds, and does one flesh wound to Mannix. Ood aims and fires a las gun shot at Mike's Ogren boss. He hits, but fails to wound. The Ogren passes his Nerves of Steel check and is not pinned. 
Mike then activates and attacks Mannix with his Ogren, does two wounds, one of which causes an out-of-action result, and Mannix goes home. Mike activates and moves another Ogren towards what's left of my gang. In the end step, Bruno fails his cool check and swims away under the platform to safety. Ood passes his cool check and stays in the fight. Turn 4 begins, and I win priority. Ood stays put and fires at Mike's boss Ogren again. The hit fails to wound, and Mike's boss fails his nerves of steel check, goes prone, but passes his initiative test and doesn't fall from the staircase. Mike's boss then stands up and throws an incendiary grenade at Ood. I'm gonna throw an incendiary grenade at him. He hits and wounds. Ood takes a serious injury and is set on fire. This is the end of the game. Mike moves his psychic ogren up to the beast Robella, picks up Cannabello Fritz, and walks off. Mike wins an entertaining if somewhat one-sided affair. We shake hands, which is missing for some reason in the new rulebook. In the rulebook from 2018 on page 92, and I quote, Players should also consider shaking hands, congratulating slash commiserating with their opponent and sharing favorite moments from the battle. Some would say this is the most important step. And I agree. I wish that paragraph would have made it into the new rulebook. We've been playing skirmish games at the store for the past four weeks or so. We're waiting to begin a new campaign and I think this week will be the start of it. I can't wait to share the new campaign with all of you. It's quite an innovative idea. But that's for another video. Well, that's all I have for you this time. Thanks for watching. Please like and subscribe.